Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. My name is Lucia and this is Lulu's Leaves. In today's video, I am going to be doing a lot of different things. I'm officially starting a little week vlog here. It's probably not going to be a full week, but I'm going to film this over a few days. So hopefully this is a little bit more exciting than my past vlogs. But yeah, today my main focus is going to be on preventing pests. I actually just went over to Canadian Tire and I purchased some Safers and All. This here is the concentrate, but I did want to go through every single one of my plants, spray them all down and make sure that there are no crazy infestations going on. I know that pests are kind of inevitable when you're taking care of your plants, but there is a lot that we can do to prevent them as well. So that is going to be today's task. I am also expecting a package of some Hoyas. So cross your fingers, those show up on time and okay. But I am really, really excited to open those too. That is going to be a whole separate video though. And that will be out before this video. So if you haven't already checked it out, I will have it linked down below and in the cards for you guys to go watch. It is going to be super, super exciting. Before we do get into the video, I want to mention that I am doing another $20 Amazon gift card giveaway. All you have to do to enter is give this video a thumbs up, be subscribed to my channel, and also leave a comment down below. Also, if you are not already a member, it is definitely worth checking that out. There is a link down in the description below as well as a join button sometimes. And yeah, from there you can go check out the different tiers that are available. I actually just posted a brand new video for my members that are the Anthurium aficionados and higher. But yeah, that's going to be all before we get into today's video. I really hope you guys do enjoy it. All right, so the first thing that I need to do is mix up the concentrate with some water into a spray bottle because that is how I'm going to start off the whole pest prevention process here. So I've got my little water sprayer here. I just wanna dump this out and then I will mix up the solution. So unfortunately I don't know exactly how much is in this little bottle here, but it is telling me to put 50 milliliters for every liter of water. Um, a liter, what is this? Okay, so my guess is that this bottle here is about 500 milliliters because this is about 500 milliliters and, and they seem to hold the same amount of liquid to a certain extent. So I am going to, go ahead and treat it like it's half a liter. Okay, I don't know if this is too much, but I'd honestly rather have too much than too little. So yeah, we're just gonna <laughs> go with that. Okay, so now that I have all of my solution mixed up, I'm gonna go around and collect some of my house plants. I do think I wanna do this in the kitchen because it's a little bit easier to clean up than any other surface. I'll just do it on the countertops here. So I'm gonna start off with some of the plants that I already have in the kitchen here because there is no reason why I shouldn't. Um, I did bring over this Syngonium though. Looks like this leaf is on its way out. It's kind of drooping and uh, it's a completely white leaf. So that is to be expected, but yeah, let's get started. All right, so what I wanna do here is I want to just start off by spraying down every single leaf front and back. And let's adjust this. I just find that Endall works a million times better than Safer's, um, or sorry, this is Safer's. I'm talking about the insecticidal soap. This is just a little bit stronger. So it's unfortunate that I have to use this, but I do wanna get things when I'm already going at it. You know what I mean? I don't wanna have to do it twice, but this stuff still is gentle enough 
that I can, spray them and uh, they'll be okay. Okay, and usually what I would do is I would just spray these all off, but I am going to leave it for a while. I'll let it dry a little bit and then I will wash off the leaves. I really just want this to be as effective as possible. So I may, I may wash off the leaves, I may not, but they should be fine. Next up here is a plant that I've actually sold already. I will still treat it because why not? And again, while I don't have any active infestations by any means, it is just a really great thing to do preventatively for your house plants. They will really appreciate it in the long run when you don't uh, have major outbreaks. I just found this guy kind of laying around. I still don't know what I'm gonna do with this. I might put this into some LECA or perlite, probably perlite actually, because I do have perlite now. So I'll find a cup for this in a little bit and we'll put it into some perlite. One other thing you do want to keep in mind is that when you are treating your houseplants, you don't want them to be in bright light. So if you have it in a bright spot, take it away from that spot because it makes the leaves a lot more susceptible to getting burnt and we definitely don't want that. So another really important thing that you want to do to prevent pests is take off any dead plant leaves or matter, anything that's in the soil that's not alive because this stuff just attracts pests. I don't know why, but it does. There is a lot of that on this plant because it's not getting a ton of light from above. So it's becoming a little bit bald on the top. I'm not particularly upset about that because it is in a spot where you don't see the top of the plant. But yeah, just make sure you're removing all of the dead leaves. Another tip if you have an active infestation is to take a look at all of the leaves that might be affected by that infestation and remove some of them, especially if they are type of pests that live in the leaves. And that would be things like thrips, spider mites, you don't have to remove the leaves unless they're looking really ugly and you just want to. But for thrips, if you do see a lot of thrip damage on a leaf, it is a really good idea to just cut it off if you're not super attached to it. So again, we're gonna spray everything down. This one's a little bit harder because there are so many leaves. So you do need to be really thorough with these plants. Even though it is annoying now when you don't have a problem, it will be 10 times more annoying if you do have a problem and you have to do this every few days. So it is worth it for sure. So this here is actually a plant that I forgot about that does have some mealy bugs on it. I'm not sure if you guys can see, but those little white dots there are all mealy bugs. Don't mind that there's barely any soil in this pot. I just mixed up some soil last night, so I can fill this up after we treat it here. But I do want to really get those bugs under control. Mealy bugs don't scare me too much, but I don't want this to become unsavable. I really don't know how this thing is gonna react to this. I've never treated a cactus before, but you know, let's, you gotta do what you gotta do. So I'm just gonna let it sit like this, all doused in the end all. I am gonna keep it away from my other plants though because obviously it is currently infested. <laughs> okay, so I've got some more plants. I do actually think that I am going to repot this Philodendron Biliatia back into a clear pot and I'm gonna save this pot for another plant that will go on my dresser. But I do want this back in the cabinet and I don't like the white pots in the cabinet. So we are going to take it out, look at the roots and, and we'll treat it while we're at it anyways. Alrighty, so we got this guy out of the pot and I'm actually pretty impressed with the roots considering it's been in a ceramic pot. I don't know what it is, but I'm always concerned when I take these guys out of ceramic pots that I don't know, something's gonna be wrong and there's gonna be root rot because I just can't see the roots. So I'm gonna put it back into this clear pot so that I have a little bit more peace of mind. So let me go grab that pot and we'll just do that right now. All right, so I have my clear pot here. This is a ooh, four inch pot, I think. Four or five inches, I think four inches. Um, I got these for a really great price. I didn't show you guys, but in the tour that I did at um, Rice Road, they do have these 
really cheap clear pots for only 99 cents for a four inch. My soil mix is the same as it always is. I just have soil, perlite, and bark in here, and it's about one third, one third, and one third. That's kind of what I've been doing, and it works really well for me. All right, so you wanna start off with a little bit on the base there, and then just stick her in. Yeah, that'll be a good size. It's a little bit snug, but this plant definitely does better when the pot is a little bit tight. And you never wanna bury these too deep either. That's why I'm holding the base of the plant up here. I don't wanna bury that deep in the soil because that sometimes does rot. And as you can see, I am compacting the soil a little bit here, but you definitely don't wanna push it down too tight because you still want your roots to be able to breathe. But I think that looks really, really nice. It actually suits the plant really well. So yeah, I'll put this guy back into the cabinet a little bit later after we've treated all of those plants too. But uh, yeah, now I have an extra white pot for maybe one of the Hoyas that I get in my package today. So I totally forgot that I actually need to repot my ring of fire too. You can see just compared to the size of the plant, the pot is really, really tiny. And I'm not sure if you can see with the reflection, but the roots are really, really root bound in there. So I am going to repot this one too, because I got this six inch pot while I was out the other day. So I'll just dump this soil and come back. Okay, it seems like the roots are really well mixed in with the soil there, and I don't want this plant to be in shock at all. So I'm just gonna place it into the new pot and fill around it, and the roots will find their way into the surrounding soil. Yeah, definitely a much better size pot for this plant. Looks a little bit more proportionate. This plant was also drying out really, really quickly. That is one of the biggest telltale signs um, that you need to repot your plants. If they're drying out really, really fast and they're not in a super high light or airy spot, you probably have it in a far too small pot. Lumi's having some fun beside me here. Okay, so the Hartley philodendron has dried off enough. I'm gonna put it back up on its shelf. Now I wanna spray these plants off that I just repotted. So we'll go ahead, front and back of each of them. I'm just gonna have so much more like peace of mind after doing all of this because, you know, it just, it really sucks seeing pests on your plants. I watched Rachel's video from Heart Shaped Leaves about all of the pests that she's dealing with right now. And it's just super stressful, just watering these guys. All right, and then we'll also do the philodendron billetier. I don't know what it is. Having this in this pot makes it look almost a little bit bigger or something. I don't know. It just looks way more proportionate in this size pot. And then we'll give this guy a water too. All right, I'm just gonna wipe down one more on camera for you guys. This is my philodendron, glorious. I don't wanna bore you guys with too much of this, but uh, yeah, we'll kind of just pick up if there's something else I gotta do. But I am really going to be going through all of my plants over the next few days and just wiping everything down. It's also not a bad idea to spray the petioles of the plants because pests also do hang out there, especially aphids um, and thrips can too. So yeah. So I thought since I have already posted this Hoya video, I would show you guys the Hoyas that I did get in case you missed it. But there is a full video that I will link in the cards for you guys to go watch. This here is a beautiful Hoya Elas River. This one is really, really, really pretty. I actually did already take a few little cuttings from it just to do a little trade with a planty friend. So yeah, this guy is cut up a little bit, but it's still looking really nice. You can see there's some nice purple uh, sun stressing on this one. And then we also have my beautiful Hoya Acuta Variegata that you guys have probably seen in a few videos now because it is definitely one of my favorites. But yeah, looking really, really good. It's in a nice white pot, like all of the plants on this shelf. And then we also have one of my favorites, the Hoya Glabra. This is actually massive. I don't know if you guys can tell, but this thing is literally bigger than my head. So 
definitely an exciting Hoya to finally have. And it's also got this super long tendril that's just flopping all over the place. I also wanted to give you guys a quick update on my Hoya pot of gold. It has this beautiful brand new leaf coming out. This is also a really large Hoya that I have here, but that new leaf is looking really pretty. It's gonna be really nice and variegated. I also wanna show you guys this new Syngonium that I got. It's so stunning. I did post a picture over on my Instagram, but this here is the Syngonium Erythrophyllum, and it's got so many beautiful leaves with these nice red backs on them. Definitely an exciting, exciting plant. It's so deep black. It almost doesn't look like there's any green to it, but a really cool plant. And yeah, I also have this little Syngonium holly going on here. Super, super cute. But yeah, by the day, my Syngonium collection is definitely getting bigger. I think I'm up to 12 Syngoniums now. And I'm also getting another one in a trade really soon, maybe even two more. So I will keep you guys updated, but I'm really going hard on the Syngoniums right now. If you're wondering why I'm going so hard on the Syngoniums, it's actually because I heard that Syngoniums aren't going to be able to be imported to Canada pretty soon. So I'm trying to get as many as I can because I am a little bit worried that something's gonna go wrong and I'm not gonna be able to have all of the Syngoniums that I really want. Another thing I did wanna show you guys is some of these propagations that I have going. I did take a lot of propagations the other night while I was watching TV. Um, I was just in the mood and I'm the kind of person that needs to do it when I think about it because otherwise I will just chicken out. But here we have this beautiful Hoya Numularioides. This has a nice pink inside of the flower. I think they're white and pink flowers similar to like Abella or something like that, but got that guy. I also took a little regular Hoya Bella propagation there and Hoya Memoria. This is, I think, going to be part of a trade. And so is this little propagation of the Pink Lady, the Peperomia Pink Lady that I have here. You guys wouldn't have seen this, uh, maybe if you watched my last video, but this here is a Monstera Stanleyana Variegata that I have going on. I do actually need to fill up a little reservoir for this. I'll do that right now before I forget, because um, this guy is looking a little bit dehydrated. Oh my gosh, while I was looking for um, <laughs> a little reservoir, I actually noticed that I got a new leaf here on my little strawberry shake. It is hard to tell what variegation is going on quite yet, but it actually looks like it might be a half moon leaf. Either that or it's not variegated, but there is a new leaf on the way and we also have a second node in there. So either way, I'm not super nervous about it. Still got that beautiful original leaf but I am gonna steal this little tray for that uh, propagation of the Monstera Stanleyana. It's so dark outside today. It's raining right now, but hopefully I can still get some good footage for you guys. <laughs> there we go. That'll give it a little bit of a drink there. I'll even see if I can fill this up a little bit more and I'll pour straight through so that um, this gets saturated. Also, while I was in the cabinet here, I did notice that some of these definitely need some water. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that while I'm over here. The Splendid needs some water. And then, and then the Strawberry Shake also needs some water. I am pretty convinced that that is a half moon leaf, which is really, really exciting. I don't know if you guys can see that, but there does seem to be a pretty harsh line down the center of that. So I'm really, really crossing my fingers there. We've also got some new growth on the Bellietia there, which is really nice. This leaf is actually pretty large compared to how the other ones have come out in the past. So hopefully we get a nice big leaf out of that. They usually do grow quite a bit when they come out. There's also some new growth on the Snowdrift down here. It is a little bit more of a lime green color than the typical white leaves that we do get, but it is still very, very pretty. And then I did move these guys over to some soil as well. These are all of the plants, or these are all of the Hoyas that I got from uh, Plant Haven. They were just a little bit thirsty in the moss and I'm really bad at keeping up with moss watering. <laughs> so I did want to switch these guys over to some soil and make them a little bit happier. These guys up here also need some water. This is the Jade Syndapsis. 
I am making a big mess, but I'm just gonna clean it up after. I don't have enough trays for everything right now, but we're out of water in the can, so I'll go fill that up and do the rest of this off camera. Hey, Lumi. Lumi. Everyone wanted a Lumi update. Lumi's doing really well. She's been comforting me while I've been sick, but yeah, you're growing up. I also wanted to give you guys a quick update of the veggie planter here. I don't know if I've talked about this yet in this vlog, but things are doing really, really well. These are the microgreens here. We've got some lettuce going. Everything's looking really good. Look at the one in the back there. That guy is just exploding. So, I mean, I think these plants grow really, really quickly. Honestly, if they're in the right conditions, they do really well. Um, here we've got some other stuff going on. I kind of forget what everything is. I can figure that out pretty easily, but not everything has sprouted. I think some of them are probably duds, you know? I mean, there is some green in there, but who knows? The uh, basil is doing well. Take that cap off. But yeah, it's been really, really easy to care for. I honestly don't even think about this thing. And just to kind of give you guys an idea of how quickly the water runs out, I have not filled this up again since I set this thing up and it's been over a week now. So it does seem to have really good water capacity and uh, that's really, really great for me because I don't have a lot of time to be watering this stuff because it needs to be watered pretty much every day if it's not in hydro. Sorry, this is kind of awkward lighting, but I did want to give you guys a little update on the Monstera, um, the Sport Variegated Monstera. You can see there is a little bit of variegation coming in there. Usually it shows up on the right side of the leaf before the left because this is usually the side that unfurls first. Um, but yeah, we're definitely gonna have a nicely variegated leaf again here. But yeah guys, I do quickly want to apologize. I wanted this vlog to be a little bit longer and a little more thorough. I did film it kind of over three days, but it wasn't exactly what I wanted it to be. I did get my second COVID vaccine, so I have been a little bit under the weather for the last few days, but I am feeling better now, so hopefully I can pump out some more videos for you guys. I think I am going to do a little Hoya tour for you guys. I know that I did one just a little while ago, but I have really amped up my Hoya collection lately, so I do wanna do an updated one of those for you guys if you're interested. But that's gonna be all for me, guys. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed the vlog, and I will see you next time. Bye guys!